Hey there all you fellow Droidiacs, this is David from the Droid Workshop. Now, yes, I am going to get to another droid. I'm working on a pit droid right now, but I only have one printer and it's taking longer than I wanted it to. But, that being said, I wanted to do another project for my Star Wars run. So, it's going to be this. The capacitor, similar to the one that Ray found in the Star Destroyer at the beginning of Episode 7. I wanted to do something original and something not readily available, like on Thingiverse or just, you know, copying what everybody else does. So, after searching the internet for anything to do with this and not coming up with much, I went ahead and I designed my own using Blender. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of reference out there other than some really shaky and blurry screen grabs. Uh, and one picture in the complete visual dictionary. So I had to do my best guess on size and proportion. It was a challenge, but I think it came out okay. All right, let's get started. After studying all the references I could find, I built the files and printed the parts. I wanted to make sure there was a lot of detail that wasn't lost in the print, so I made sure to make the ribs on the bottom and the O-ring separate pieces. Judging from the pictures and some comments on Facebook, I picked up some cheap clothespins from Walmart so I could repurpose the springs. But in the end, after much trial and error, For me, they turned out to be more trouble than they're worth. So I went back to Blender and made my own springs, which turned out exactly like I wanted. Like all projects, after sanding all the pieces and hitting them with a little primer, I started the painfully slow task of attaching the ribs. I say slow because I wanted to use CA glue here since it is faster than E6000, but without the accelerant spray, it took a lot longer than I wanted. Lesson learned. Always have accelerant on hand if you're using CA glue. Now on this round, I set the springs in place first while I was trying to glue the ribs. Second lesson learned. The springs can be put in last. Now on to the final painting. The springs were supposed to be silver with a little bit of corrosion on them, so I manually touched them up with rattle can silver and a cheap paintbrush. Next up is the main weathering and grime. I've done stuff like this in the past, but I picked up another technique from Van Oak's props on using a spray bottle of water to make the grime really flow into the cracks and crevices before dabbing off the excess with a paper towel. It really worked out well, and I think I'll be doing this from now on. I also used this technique after custom mixing a brownish rust color paint for the springs. I love the way it allowed the paint, or the corrosion, to stay in the recesses of the spring and it really gave them a bit of depth. And done! Or so I thought. <sighs> 3D design and printing is a constant learning process. You never stop learning. You will never get something right on the first try. Or if you think you have, you'll find areas that you look at and say, I can do better. Or, what the heck was I thinking? That was me on this first build, especially after I showed it to my son and he said, hey dad, that's great, but shouldn't these springs be down inside the capacitor a little bit more? 
So it was back to Blender to make some corrections. I took the opportunity to redesign a few things, not just the spring placement. The holes in the ribs for the spring ends, the depth of the spot where the springs go, and a few other minor changes. And the newest capacitor parts were done. For most of the print, the parts can be printed with a skirt or a brim. But for the springs and ribs, I used the raft setting. This helps to make sure they don't break when you're taking them off the platform. It uses about twice the amount of filament, but trust me, it's worth it. The build for this is exactly the same as the first, except this time I had the accelerant for the CA glue and I put some tape on the bottom piece where it slides into the top to save on sanding off the paint for a good fit. Inside the capacitor is hollow and the hole at the top is open to the inside. I did this because I wanted an option to add an LED at a later date, but I still don't know if I want it to be a steady light or blinking one, so I'll figure that out later. Now for the socket, we don't actually see what Ray pulls the capacitor out of, so we don't really have a good clear reference of what it plugs into. So for this, I just made something up on the fly that this would fit into. And one of the main things that I did was I added magnets at the bottom, and I also put a screw hole in there so that it can be mounted to a ceiling or to the wall. Um, but a happy little accident is didn't realize until after I had printed everything and got it all put together that this bottom ring of my capacitor actually fits very, very snugly inside here. But I went ahead and I put the magnets on there anyway just to make sure that it doesn't come out and possibly fall from your ceiling and all your hard work is kaput. So there you have it. A Star Destroyer barrel capacitor and socket. <laughs> Can't wait to get this mounted in my own room once my room is done. But I don't know where it's going to go yet or how many I'm going to end up making. Hmm. That'll do it for today. I'm going to be putting a link in the description down below to my website where I'm going to be hosting the files for this if you would like to get this and build one for yourself. And if you do, please let me know about it. I would love to see your creations. I'm going to be including my email address and my personal Facebook page so that you can message me and let me see what you've done. And if you like what I did here today, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can get the all future updates. And I promise you, the next one will be the Pit Droid. Promise. Pete's done. As always, may the droids be with you.